Hi guys, welcome back to um, Classic Hi-Fi Reviews. Today we are looking at the Pioneer CT-S340S and I hope this is not that much of a repair video, it's more of a review of the deck, but uh, I just took this deck away, it is um, out of storage, so I've, I have I've never tried it. Um, so that will be um, a bit of an experiment and I hope that uh, we can focus on um, how this deck performs, uh, because this deck uh, is is a bit special. Um, not because it has a midship mounted mechanism like a midship uh, mounted engine in a Ferrari or another sports car, but it has uh, the Dolby S noise reduction system, uh, which is a bit special. There were not many consumer grade decks that have been released with this. Beside that, it also can do um, the Dolby B and C that are more commonly known and used. Um, and um, so I want to give this a go and see um, how good this deck actually sounds. The overall impression, besides it ha that it has a mid-chip mounted mechanism, uh, it is rather cheap. It's a plastic front um, and the door is uh, quite plasticky. It's, it's, it's not very convincing. But uh, yeah, so these decks were produced in the 90s and there was a bit of a fierce competition going on and there was also then a battle between cassette deck and other formats, tapes and other formats. Um, so therefore um, the components then out of that period were not necessarily that well built and like we had that in the 70s or early 80s. Um, okay, so let's give it a go. Um, uh, it's plugged in, yeah. So we got uh, you got power. It says standby. Um, okay, it turns on. Um, yeah, I got a nice uh, amber colored uh, display. I uh, can switch here between meter range. Uh, you can turn the whole thing off, and besides the normal counter. It also can uh, can show you the the time, which is which is great, which I really like. And then on the other side here, we do have then the Dolby noise reduction switch, so we can switch it then now to Dolby B, C, and S, and can turn it off again. This is CD synchronization um, that uh, is useful if you have like a CD player um, and if you want to make a record a tape. Um, then um, they can help when you push here on pause and then the C -play D player stops and so on. And another special feature that it has, and it's a bit a unique thing to pioneer, that's the auto uh, BLE system. So with this system it will automatically calibrate, uh, calibrate the bias um, and the record levels uh, for that particular kind of tape that, that you are currently using. Um, so that guarantees that you have an optimum um, quality recording when you're using this deck. So that's a really great thing to have um, and that can make a huge difference in the result you're getting out of that. It wouldn't have obviously any impact on playback. Um, you don't use that for playback. This is just to determine the optimal recording parameters for that kind of tape that you're using right now. Okay, um, so enough talking. Uh, maybe we just uh, throw in, throw in the tape. So I dug out a uh, uh, good old Britney Spears tape. Uh, maybe one more time. Okay, kind of, kind of fits. Uh, so let's see if we have playback. Okay, that sounds uh, not too great, but also not too bad. How about rewind? Uh, doesn't sound too good with rewind. And forward doesn't seem to work either. So that's definitely a bit of a repair video that we'll be having. Um, that's what I can see. So that pretty much looks like we got a bit of an idler issue. Um, but besides that, it does play. So that's... Uh, that's a good news. So it sounds a bit muffled, um, so we will demagnetize the head and clean it, and that will make definitely a difference. 
But before we can really go into testing um, uh, this guy here, we need to open it up um, and need to um, check uh, what is the cause for the uh, rewind and uh, fast forward function not working properly. Uh, so that usually means there is an issue with the idler tire. Um, but uh, some of the later decks they used gears. So I don't I hope that we uh, do not have to recreate and um, and three D print uh, a new gear to get this going. Um, but uh, yeah, let's have a look inside, and uh, that way we will figure it out, I guess. So I'm a bit surprised. There are just screws in the back, no screws on the side, but okay. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, so from the inside, uh, there isn't too much, um, but that was expected. So our challenge will be to get to the transport. And uh, yeah, so we got this midship mounted transport here. And there are two gears and uh, they both seem to have good tension. Sorry, not gears, belts. Um, so this is the capstan belt, and this might be the belt for the logic control. To get the transport out, uh, we have to remove two screws on the top, and probably there are more screws on the bottom. Now there's maybe one. No, it doesn't even be lighted. So we can give that a go. <coughs> Sometimes for the later decks, you also have to remove the entire front to get access to the transport. I hope that is not the case here on that one. Uh, that's a bit extra work, but yeah, let's wait and see. But definitely it looks like it has been all solved here uh, in a very cheap way. Um, and uh, yeah, something I do not necessarily like. Another cost cutting that I noticed is that the cassette door actually can't be removed. So for me, it's pretty much practice that you remove uh, the front door before you start removing the transport. But here on the bright side, the transport does not seem to be hard connected to the door. So it, it should not really give us any trouble. And I also learned it's not two screws that keeps the transport attached to the front panel, but four screws. Um, there are two more screws on the bottom of the transport. Not that easy to be accessed like the ones on the top, but it's manageable. Yeah, and after getting the transport finally out and looking at the front, I can see there's no idler tire in the heat. We got a gear here instead uh, that is doing fast forward and rewind. But luckily the gear is not broken. Yeah, so the problem must be somewhere else. Okay, so let's put in a tape and flip the transport around and then we just need to keep it in our hand and uh, initiate a rewind and fast forward and let's see what happens. Hmm. I think the belt is slipping here. This one. So that will require replacement. Also notice how cheaply all of this is made with this, I don't know, I think it's a plastic flywheel. So what kind of wow and flutter can we expect on a device like that? Probably not a great one. Okay, so what you're going to do is replacing this belt and see if we are then back in business when it comes to rewind and fast forward. Okay, so I have unplugged it again. Let's take on the tape. So that's the capstan belt, which leaves a good impression. And this is here the belt for the other functions. Uh, it has a bit of a chewy consistency. So let's get another one. Seems to be a 1.2, 1.4 millimeter square belt. So let's see if I got something that fits here. Okay, so I got this 46 by 1.4 and I consider that 
close enough. So let's give it a try. Okay. We reinstall the capstan build. Come on. Okay. So let's plug that back in into the power outlet. Britney Spears has to go back inside. And it says power on. Okay. Well, let's try fast forward again. And it's looking good. How about rewind? Yeah, rewind looks good. Playback works like it did before. So that is great. Um, probably a good idea to pull out the flywheel with the capstan. Um, there is a, there's a C-spring. I hate C-springs because they are flying everywhere. But let's do that. Let's pull that out and put some good oil on it. Uh, that goes a long way. Uh, then we clean the head and um, put it back together. And then we should be in good shape. So let's unplug this guy again. And here we got a small screwdriver. Fingers crossed. Okay, I got it. That is great. Carefully put it on the side. Anything else here? Uh, there is a washer. That's the washer that is supposed to keep the oil inside. So I put that on the side as well. So then again, we remove belt number one and belt number two will come off, we can say, automatically. So here's the capstan. Let's clean it a little bit uh, with alcohol, isopropyl. And after that, lubricate it. So that's IPA. Okay. And some oil that works well as capstan oil. Okay. Not too little, not too much. Plug that back in. Here we go. And of course our belts. Build number one. It's a bit difficult with the cameras. Okay, we should manage. Here we go. It's still around the pulley, excellent. And on the other side, we need to put back on the washer that keeps the oil in and the C-spring, of course. And then it's time to have a look at the head. Here we go. So they're not looking too bad, yeah. but definitely we want to clean them. So again, a little bit of IPA. Give it a good scrub. You can push here a little bit harder, that's all right, they don't break. And they need a good scrub. There's definitely quite a bit. As you can see, that comes off it. And we also clean the erase head. The capstan is clean already. Pinch roller looks good. And I don't like to put uh, IPA on it if I don't have to because it makes the rubber hard. And we don't want hard rubber. We want to have it nice and rubbery. Okay, so now we can just install that back with these four screws. Um, and uh, 
everything should be in order and we can give the deck a bit more of a test the last thing I'll be doing before we play it is uh, I will demagnetize uh, playback head and the capstan so for that I got a demagnetizer and we can that do that while it is not installed so here we have my trusted head demagnetizer I just plug it in it's slowly closer to the transport and I can feel how the magnetizer now vibrates a little bit and also demagnetize the capstan and that's it so and if you want it has a protective cover over it so it's not metal on metal to not damage anything just unplug it and that's it so now we have demagnetized it and we can install the transport back into the cassette deck Okay, and here we go. All right, so I will just put the screws back in and uh, see you then in a few minutes. Okay, so we are back together. Um, let's uh, test the same tape from the beginning and let's see if this made a difference in the demagnetization and the cleaning of the heads. Um, and you probably still have a fresh in your mind how it sounded before. So let's see how it sounds now. So that's a huge difference compared to what we had before. So that made uh, definitely a big improvement. And we got uh, fast forward working and we got rewind working. So that's excellent. So I'm not closing um, this up yet because what we want to do is we want to put it now on the tester and the more interesting part begins. Uh, so we want to see how well it does in terms of wow and flutter and we want to do a speed adjustment. Um, and after the speed adjustment we will do a recording, something that is um, not under any copyright so we use some music out of the uh, YouTube library and then we can, uh, can get a better idea um, how well uh, it works or how bad it works I don't know um, and we will then do obviously a direct line capture and not picking up the sound through the microphone again okay all right so let's let's do that now okay so this is the audio uh, analyzer that I like to use um, and so we are here already at wow and flutter but I like to use the advanced view and you can see that we are here at 3160 megahertz so that's not so bad so we are pretty close in in terms of speed yeah so that is all right um and wow and flutter is between 0 0.08 0 0.09 um so i'm actually surprised that with that um plastic flywheel and that mechanism that is in that deck uh, that we are getting a relatively decent uh, wow and flutter so Maybe it's worth a try to just adjust um, the speed a little bit. Okay, so the tape speed is not here um, on the back of the motor. It's, it's actually here. And when I twist and turn it, you can see how the speed changes on the wow and flutter meter. So we are at 300, 3149. So that's so close to 3150 that I would just leave it like that. Yeah? So that's pretty good. Um, I think there are no other adjustments that we need to do here on this cassette deck. Um, and we can go ahead and start our record and playback tests. And I will also give it a little bit of a clean. The front is quite dusty and I just don't want to leave it like that. Okay, so it's time to do the uh, recording test. So I picked uh, a Maxwell Type 1 position Maxwell UE, 60 minutes. And um, the first thing what we want to do is we want to get the auto BLE going so that we have the optimal um, calibration for this uh, Maxwell UE tape. So for that we just hit the uh, super auto BLE button and it should start doing its magic. And here you see it, so it winds a little bit forward and records some bias signals 
the boot goes back, measures them, and after that it goes into air roll. And I tried it many times after this and the only thing that I would be getting is an error. So I went ahead, did some research on the internet, downloaded the service manual and there's a procedure to calibrate the different frequencies for the Auto BLE system. And how that exactly works is explained in the service manual. And for this procedure, a certain key combination need to be pressed to put the tape deck into a certain mode. And when it's in that mode, with the adjustment of these three potentiometers on the main board, we are able to dial in the frequencies. And that's what I'm doing here right now. So after pressing the button combination, um, you will see 01, that's the first frequency, and the top bar and the bottom bar lining up, so the gap and the top bar, that's what needs to be aligned with each other. The second frequency is definitely off, so I had to turn the middle potentiometer um, to get that aligned the way it's supposed to be and the third one was actually also still accurate. Okay. And here is another auto PLE calibration attempt after doing this. Yeah, I was very happy when it worked at the end and I thought, great, now we can start with the recording and uh, compare the different Dolby systems and then I noticed there is a terrible noise in the background. But the reason for the problem was found quickly. I forgot to put on the grounding wire onto the transport. Yeah, so when you experience this kind of issues, check that the grounding is there um, and uh, yeah, attaching the grounding wire again to the transport resolve the problem and finally uh, I could start do the recordings and capture the different results from playback. Okay so I took a brand new tape, did the Super Auto BLE calibration again and now you see me here setting the recording level and giving the tape an input with our first test song. Okay, and here's a brief explanation what I've done. So I captured 10 second recording nothing uh, and then captured two different songs. Uh, each of the songs with all three different Dolby types and without Dolby. Um, and all of that is played back then and uh, captured in Audacity and then here cut together for you um, to compare. So this is enjoyed best with uh, wearing some headphones, um, otherwise you might not be able really to notice uh, the changes. I was quite surprised that the deck, even though it's quite simple and cheap head, I think, actually sounds pretty good. But um, listen to yourself and uh, leave your judgment in the comments. Just a quick interruption, here are the measurements that I made in Audacity. So the lower the value, the better it is. So definitely Dolby S is leading the pack. Um, and in the second graph, you can see the difference between the different noise levels. Um, assuming that Dolby S is zero, you can see how in relation to Dolby S, the noise floor would look like in decibel, so just to give you an idea. And what follows now is the first song uh, captured without Dolby and the three different Dolby versions cut together in one. Then you will hear the digital original for comparison and then the second song. The second song is more of an upbeat song and you will be listening to it without Dolby and with Dolby S and I think that will be sufficient and then we will be wrapping up this video. They don't have to 
Okay, so here we have it. Um, so that was a comparison between the different Dolby systems, also actually quite interesting for myself. Um, so his is definitely a problem. So if you are recording without Dolby and you heard that with the just the blank recording with nothing, no signal on it, and then also when the song came that you can definitely notice there is a lot of his. Um, I was surprised that uh, with Dolby B actually quite a lot of the hiss already dropped. Uh, so in the uh, in the blank recording there is actually not much difference between Dolby B and Dolby C. So I must say that I love Dolby C so I was surprised about that. But you can hear that then in the actual recording of the first song that uh, definitely Dolby C is a bit more effective than Dolby B. And I was also surprised to learn that how great actually Dolby S works, so it eliminates the hiss completely. So that's that's amazing. Um, yeah, so this deck got quite a bit of bashing uh, from me in, in the process. Um, something I I also just want to point out is because you can't remove the door, you have no easy option to adjust. Uh, are they moose for example yeah so i have to take the transport out like we did and, and do it then that way so that's a bit bad but overall it actually performed quite well it sounded good so that should give you an idea um how how well um, um, a deck of this kind can work and how good an audio recording can actually sound and that's it already i hope you enjoyed the video and as usual thanks for watching